You spent 16 years at NASA uh, leading some of the most cutting edge research projects. Uh, uh, the, the, the systems you've built uh, uh, you know, aren't just on paper or in the realms of research on a lab. They're out there literally in our solar system being proven. The asteroid belt on Mars and elsewhere. Uh, in your 16 years and beyond, Dr. Sengupta, have you ever come close? Have there been moments in your work, in your research, when you've come close to getting a sense that there's going to be a breakthrough to that eternal question, are we alone in the universe? So I actually absolutely believe that we're not alone in the interviews, and it's actually probabilistically unlikely that we would be the only organism. And I think when I was working on the development of a cryo-explorer for Europa, which is one of the moons of Jupiter, um, it actually has a liquid water ocean. So I honestly think that when we're able to send something to melt through the ice on Europa, we will find some type of life form. It probably won't be an intelligent life form like us, but it will be an organism. And that really will change our perspective because it's not just about Earth where life exists. It could be many, many places in our solar system as well as beyond our solar system in our galaxy and in other galaxies. So, so you're saying that uh, 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 life definitely exists outside the solar system, but you're saying that you believe that Europa, which is a moon of Jupiter, right here in our solar system, when that probe actually goes there, digs down into that moon and reaches that liquid ocean, you're, you strongly believe there will be life. So there will be alien life, as it were, in our solar system. I think it's quite likely. And for example, one of the moons of Saturn, Enceladus, there's plumes that erupt from the surface of the moon, and we already know that there's organic material in those plumes because of the Cassini spacecraft. So just from a probabilistic perspective, um, it is very likely that we'll find organic aggregates and potentially, let's say, some sort of single-celled organism in those oceans. You know, while, you know, while all of us are processing some of these things we're talking about, stuff that's happening in Mars, the asteroid belt, uh, uh, you know, systems moving at blinding speed that are beyond our immediate conception, uh, there are many, I'm sure, Dr. Sengupta, who've asked you through your travels and your talks about why are we looking so much into space? Why spend all this money on space travel and you know, uh, millions if not billions of dollars on a space program when we've got so many problems to solve here on Earth? How do you, you know, I, I, know, I know a bit of the answer, but how do you address that question? So it is a really important discussion, and it's an important debate to have, but when you develop new technology, when you do fundamental research, you never know what it's going to lead to in the future, but you still do it. And some examples of that would be the laser. People said 50 years ago, what is a laser going to be used for? It's used for everything, from medical devices to laser pointers to manufacturing. And when you look at the space program, the number of technologies that have been created that have made our world a better place when it comes to energy technologies, like fuel cells, like solar arrays, when it comes to energy storage technologies like batteries. It actually improves the quality of our life here on Earth and it translates to economic development, economic gain, which ultimately um, you know, creates a better society for us. And I think the other really important one is that it actually motivates young people to become scientists and engineers. So yeah. me, I never would have been a scientist and engineer without the space program. And so with that motivation comes in a tremendous return on investment from the space program. We, we, we've got some uh, you know, nice imagery from, uh, from from Dr. Sengupta's work, which we'll keep flipping on that screen behind us. But uh, the reason why I believe Dr. Sengupta when she answers that question, uh, you know, which, which I'm sure most space scientists are asked, is because, because she's a person who has actually uh, literally put her money where her mouth is, uh, taken many of the learnings and technologies, her education, her career, her achievements in space research, and applied them to real problems here on Earth. Isn't that true, Dr. Sengupta? The, the, the things that you're doing right now are about solving problems here on Earth. Yeah, so in 2017, I decided to leave NASA and join a startup developing green transportation because I truly believe that my engineering skills from the space program, the technologies that we've developed in the space program, the mindset associated with doing, making the impossible possible has a real translation to making our quality of life here on Earth by mitigating climate change.